On the first day of October, Halloween gave to me a fog that makes it hard to see. Well, hey there, and welcome to Legion Podcasts 31 Days of Halloween. That's right, it is October 1st. We are going to be doing one of these every ding dong day uh, from now until October 31st. And uh, that begs the question what are we doing? So, I love uh, Halloween, always have. I assume you do too if you're listening to this. Uh, if, if you are not a Halloween enthusiast, then. Uh, I I don't know what to tell you. You're missing out on what is good in life, uh, as Conan might say. Uh, I wanted to do something a little special this year and share my list of movies that I'm watching, but also uh, do it as a little bit of a little treat, right? Like every morning you wake up and there's a little Halloween present under the the spooky tree. And that uh, present is me talking about the movies that I love and I hope you do. And if you don't, I'm going to give you a reason why I think you might want to include it somewhere in your list uh, this year. Uh, except, of course, for the 31st, uh, which is booked. And I gotta tell you, it is not what you might suspect. I have my whole list. It is not uh, It is not Trick or Treat. It is not the original Halloween. It is, in fact, a uh, another film. But uh, I don't want to give anything away, you know? Like, let's just, let's savor the moment. This is October 1st. We have 31 days of this. Uh, and I am starting with a bang. My, my first film that I have viewed for uh, the 31 days of October is none other than John Carpenter's The Fog. Why did I start with that movie? I started with The Fog because it is one of my favorite haunted stories. I almost said haunted house. Uh, It's more of a haunted town story. And you'll notice as we go through these, there are some themes to the movies that I watch. And this launches us uh, uh, on a bit of a a haunted house and haunted object uh, kind of streak. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It, it builds a lot of atmosphere. The, the movie famously was reshot extensively so that uh, the the back third, or not back third, but a third of the film, about uh, 30% of the movie, all comes from reshoots. And I think this is one of the, I don't know if it's necessarily one of the few times, but one of those times where that benefits the production greatly. I mean, I don't... I don't know precisely what shots were added. I know they said they wanted to make it gorier. So I assume some things like, you know, Adrian Barbo hitting the the, the zombie pirate in the face and seeing some worms and things like that. I would imagine that is the kind of thing that got added. But but I don't know. And I kind of don't care. Uh, I like the fact that the movie is kind of magical to me. And there are a lot of people who think it's kind of lesser Carpenter or, or aren't on board with it or whatever. Um, I think it's just a great, uh, a great little spook story. Um, like, like when you get John Houseman at the beginning of the film, uh, telling the, essentially what is the story of, of the film itself, it, it, but he starts it with that great, you know, it's 1155, five minutes to midnight, time enough for one more story to keep us warm. And that's the kind of shit that I will eat up all day long with this movie. Somebody telling a ghost story well is one of my favorite things. And it doesn't happen in horror movies as much as you might suspect. Not nearly enough for my money, if you ask me. So, uh, I I like that about it. I like the fact that it's a bunch of these interconnected stories. You know, there's the overarching story of The Fog, but then you have Nick Castle, you know, famously The Shape, but the character's name of Tom freaking Atkins in this movie. Uh, And his relationship with Jamie Lee Curtis and... He is trying to find his buddy who got lost at sea on a boat. And that ties into the whole story of uh, Janet Lee's character who is planning the big Antonio Bay celebration. And her husband was one of the guys missing on the boat. But she's concerned with, you know, the, this 100th anniversary of the town coming off without a hitch. There is a an extremely underrated, for my money, Nancy Loomis as her assistant and I love their relationship I I like the fact that Nancy Loomis is kind of the sassy you know assistant who doesn't take a lot of Janet Lee shit but also seems to care about her and and vice versa so I like their relationship and it's also just oh uh, of course there's Adrian Barbeau 
and uh, and and her son that she is raising, and she runs the lighthouse where John Carpenter's band, the Coupe de Ville's, uh, are the only thing on the menu for that radio station. But you know, kind of fine. It's laid back. It's fun. So yeah, there there are all those little stories that weave together. Um, and they all build to this big finale where the, the fog sweeps into town and uh, the, the ghosts uh, chase everybody up to the old church that Hal Holbrook runs. And he is uh, a great drunken Irish priest in this movie. There's that great cameo from uh, John Carpenter where Hal Holbrook as the priest, uh, Father Malone, when uh, John Carpenter is like, hey, uh, so come in at four tomorrow. And he's like, yeah, come in at four tomorrow. And John Carpenter says, hey, can I get paid? And Hal Holbrook says, you know what? Why don't you come in at six? Make it six instead of four tomorrow. And uh, John Carpenter's just like, all right, father. It takes off. Thank God my boss isn't like that. Like, hey, how about I get paid? You know, how about you come in at 10 instead of eight tomorrow? <laughs> Not how the world works. But it's a great little moment in the movie. Hal Holbrook has, uh, again, an, uh, what I think is an underrated jump scare when he comes out of fucking nowhere in the in the church to scare Janet Lee. Uh, I think that's a great scare. Is it a Stone Cold classic in the sense that you're going to walk away from this movie feeling wowed? Probably not. That's not, even as much as I love The Fog, and I do love The Fog, that is not what I walk away from The Fog with. What I, what I, what I walk away from The Fog with is the sense that I've been told a really good, creepy ghost story. And, and that's what I kind of love about it. It, it is a, uh, a, a completely uh, self-contained film. There is no, even though there's a little bit of a watch the skies kind of ending on this thing, uh, reminiscent of the, you know, films of the 50s, uh, the saucer panic films and things like that, of, you know, to all the ships at sea, watch the fog. Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and I like that stuff. But it, it's more of a sense of being told a story well uh, at, at the end of the film. I'm, I'm not charged other than to to feel very satisfied uh, af after watching The Fog. But it, it's such a great introduction to the Halloween season for me. Because the, the reason I want to, to start off with The Fog is that it's everything I kind of love about John Carpenter and the genre. It's like, you know, it's the great music and the Dean Cundey shots and the anamorphic uh, vi visuals of the film. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous to look at. It sounds great. I was watching the uh, the Shout Factory Blu-ray uh, of The Fog. It, it looks better than it ever has, certainly, and, uh, and it always looked good. And, you know, some of the effect shots uh, where they, you know, mat in the fog and stuff like that don't hold up as well uh, in, you know, Blu-ray quality. But I kind of don't care. All the fog stuff works really well for me in the movie. And again, lends to this overarching feeling of it just being kind of a creepy little movie. And at the end of it, I just want to watch more horror movies. You know, it's such a... Maybe that's the thing I love about The Fog. It's a great brand advocate. You know, like you can show almost anybody The Fog, the original 80 The Fog, and they kind of get it, you know? They may not love it, but they're going to be like, oh, okay, so it's this haunted town and ghost pirates and shit like that. And all of that stuff is are, are things I love. And and while we're on the subject of ghost ships, um, why the fuck are there not more good ghost ship movies? Uh, th there's uh, th that ghost ship film uh, that uh, Dark Castle produced, uh, along with, you know, 13 Ghosts and, and House on Haunted Hill and whatnot. And that movie was a real disappointment because it had that great opening sequence and the rest of the movie was kind of trash. Uh, or just uninspired and dull and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, Ghost Ship is no good. This is maybe the best, like, haunted ship movie. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I guess you could kind of make an argument for some of those. The Pirates of the Caribbean movies that have a lot to do with cursed ships and whatnot, but as far as horror movies go, there are are, are sadly few. And I love the idea of a good uh, haunting on the seas, you know. And there just aren't a, aren't a ton. And and to be honest, not a, a, a ton of great just haunting movies. Not I'm not talking about those like paranormal normal activity ripoffs and stuff like that, where people are just wandering around a haunted house and like, oh, the cabinets are open. Holy shit. Let's make seven of these and put them on Amazon Prime. No, I'm talking about like like a good ghost story. 
you know, like this, like a poltergeist, like, uh, oh geez, the, the 50s had the best of them, I think, like the uninvited and the turning and, and things like that. Or the innocents, I'm sorry. The turning was the recent turning of this group. Uh, and we're about to get another Haunting of Bly Manor it is right around the corner for uh, this Halloween season on, on Netflix. So, yeah, I look forward to more haunted stuff uh, in the future uh, on, on this very special run of shows. But uh, but also in general, I wish that there were more like more intricately plotted ghost stories as opposed to the house is haunted. Let's set up a video camera. You know, the stuff where it's like, well, why is it haunted? How do we stop the haunting? Why is the haunting dangerous to us? What does the haunting want? You know, that's the kind of stuff that I really like in The Fog is like, the, hey, these these folks got uh, fucking crawled at it by a bunch of uh, jerks who didn't want a leper colony nearby. And so you got to give them back across the gold. And all that makes sense to me. And I wish more movies did that kind of thing with hauntings. Uh, where it, it's more of a setup and payoff. Maybe we are uh, we are still here, which was not a movie I liked a lot on first viewing, but maybe I should go back and watch it at some point. Anyway, uh, that's a discussion for another time. What isn't a discussion for another time is you should watch The Fog. Uh, I think it's a terrific movie. It, it's a great start for me personally uh, on this 31 Days of Halloween. But hey, uh, I know this is the first one and it's just me yapping. Um, that may change. Uh, we might have some some other folks in here, but also I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what your Halloween traditions are. Like right now, I'm still as I record this. It isn't fair warning. A little peek behind the curtain. As I record this, it's not exactly October first, right? I gotta do a little preparation and whatnot. But as uh, as I'm sitting here, I'm staring out the window and I'm contemplating my decorations for this year and how I want to up my game a little bit. Uh, got all my props and whatnot. Uh, got my fog machine. Uh, I, I think it's about time we added some audio. Anyway, I am excited about this Halloween. I know it has been a rough year and maybe I am throwing myself into Halloween a bit more because of the rough year it has been. So <laughs> I'm hoping like hell that this is a, a fun and safe Halloween season for all of us. I'm excited to get started, but uh, I, I want to hear from you. Like I said, I, I want I want you to let me know what what traditions you have, what things you enjoy uh, doing, what you're decorating, what you're watching. I want to know all that stuff, and and basically, uh, let's just kind of share our Halloween stories uh, at at a time when, uh, boy, I sure could use to hear them. So uh, please send them to me. How do you do that? You might ask. Well, I want you to go to uh, your emails. And I want you to send me an email at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. In the subject line, just uh, throw in Halloween as the subject line uh, and shoot that email over to me. Let me know uh, Let me know what you're watching. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're excited about this Halloween. Let me know what you're curious about. Let me know if you have thoughts about the fog. Uh, and then I'm going to be back tomorrow, everyone, uh, to talk about my number two movie. What is it? I'm not going to tell you. That's the kind of jerk I am. I'm going to make you come back and, uh, and on day two of the 31 days of Halloween and uh, and, and discuss the movie with me. So um, I look forward to hearing from you folks. Uh, I'm very, very excited to, uh, to be embarking on this 31 days of Halloween with you. I, I hope you get a chance to watch The Fog sometime uh, this month. I think it'll do you right. Uh, until then, uh, stay spooky, everybody, and I will talk to you tomorrow.